Thank you again for joining us today. My name is Noemi Razo. I'm the Clinical Application Specialist at Malar. Today's webinar will provide attendees with an overview on the microcath, Malar's clinical pressure catheter, and provide insight into applications where the microcath's high fidelity pressure signal provides deeper insight into the cardiovascular function. A bit of housekeeping before we begin, all audio from the attendees will be muted during the presentation. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Feel free to send us your questions as the webinar progresses. You can do that by typing your questions in the questions panel on the GoToWebinar toolbar. You may need to expand the questions panel by selecting the plus sign. When prompted, when prompted to participate in polls, submit your answer in the polls menu. This presentation is intended for current and potential microcath users and will provide an overview of the microcath pressure catheters intended use, SPACs, theory of operation, cath lab setup, high fidelity pressure signal advantages, and a brief discussion on applications. Before we proceed, I will open the first poll of the webinar to gain an idea of attendee experience with the Malar microcath. Our poll question is, what is your experience with the microcath pressure catheter? And I'll go ahead and open up the poll now. Again, the poll panel is on the GoToWebinar control panel. Okay, so the results from the poll, what is your experience with the microcath pressure catheter? And it seems like it's um, a kind of a split between people who have a general understanding of the microcath through publications and um, maybe have used the microcath previously. Um, so moving on to the FDA intended use, the microcath delivers true high fidelity pressure data for deeper insight into the cardiovascular function. Although primarily known for its use in cardiovascular application, Molar has recently expanded the microcath indication for use to include measurements of intercompartmental and airway pressures in the human body. It is FDA approved for short term, less than 24 hours single use. The microcast distal end contains a 3.5 French sensor case containing a side-mounted MEMS sensor. The catheter seed is a 2.3 French from the sensor's case to the strain relief and is 120 centimeters in length. To deliver the microcath into the cardiovascular system in interventional procedures, the catheter will require support via guide catheter containing an inner diameter equal or greater than 0.049 inches. In most cases, a 5 French multi-purpose catheter will work for access into the right or left ventricle. The microcath can be delivered through the lumen of a 15 to 16 gauge needle to measure the intracompartmental tissue pressures. The microcath is designed using a Wheatstone bridge configuration containing a pressure-sensitive membrane known as a sensor diaphragm. The diaphragm is side-mounted on the distal sensor case. The sensor measures the summation of the mechanical pressure that impinges on the diaphragm and converts that to a voltage signal, which can, use, which can be used to calibrate to a known value of millimeters of mercury. A typical cath lab microcath setup includes the use of a Millar TC510 control unit and cable accessories. It's important to note that the interface cable between the TC510 control unit and cath lab monitor will vary between manufacturers. The TC510 control unit allows for a seamless interface to the cath lab's monitoring system. It also enables users to calibrate and zero balance the catheter's signal after connection. 
The microcast sensor does not require a pre-soak, therefore the setup and calibration can be performed within minutes. There are many advantages to utilizing the, macro, the microcast for its high fidelity pressure signal. Millar sensors are considered the gold standard for in vivo and in vitro pressure measurements. The sensor's diaphragm is extremely sensitive to small pressure changes. Compared to fluid fill catheters, there is no motion in catheter whip artifacts. Millar sensors have an excellent frequency response and no signal attenuation. The sensor is also vented to atmosphere to minimize the effect of atmospheric pressure. We've discussed a few advantages of the microcath high fidelity signal. This table draws a comparison between the microcath and your traditional fluid filled catheters. The microcath's high frequency response provides greater accuracy than your traditional fluid filled catheter and therefore makes it possible to measure DBDT with higher reliability. It's important to note that the microcast sensor is positioned at the pressure source, whereas the transducer used in fluid filled catheters is positioned externally from the patient. This lab chart tracing provides a comparison between a Millar's high fidelity pressure catheter and a traditional fluid filled catheter. The red channel represents Millar's high fidelity signal and the blue channel is a signal acquired from a fluid filled catheter. Note signal attenuation on the fluid filled blue channel when the frequency of the pulse waveform increases from 5 Hz to 10 Hz. In this waveform we see the effects of tapping both a Millar high fidelity catheter and fluid filled catheter. Notice the artifact collected in the blue channel where the red high fidelity signal is not affected by mechanical disturbances along the catheter lead. This plot shows a DPDT waveform of both the high fidelity catheter in red and the fluid filled catheter in blue. The high fidelity signal is plotted with greater accuracy. Notice the time delay and dampened signal of the blue waveform. The micropath pressure catheter is used in many cardiovascular applications where high fidelity signal is required to make accurate assessments. In aortic stenosis cases, the microcath is used to measure pressure gradients across the aortic valve. The microcath can also be delivered into the right ventricle for RV and PA pressures in studies involving pulmonary hypertension. Because patients are moving during exercise study, the microcath provides physicians reassurance that the signal will not be disturbed from motion artifact and therefore DPDT, which is a measure of contractility, will not be affected when plotted. In conclusion, the microcath is FDA approved for diagnostic and research pressure measurements in cardiovascular, intercompartmental, and airway studies and is a gold standard for pressure measurements due to its high signal accuracy. So this concludes our presentation today. I'll now open the questions panel for Q&A. If you have any questions related to clinical support or would like to learn how your current research could benefit from high fidelity pressure signal, feel free to shoot us an email at cells at millard.com. So if you have any questions, you can submit them on the questions panel toolbar. And I'm not seeing any questions coming through, but I did want to point out um, the signal range for the uh, Millar microcath. And um, because it is designed for cardiovascular studies, it will measure within your typical um, cardiovascular pressure ranges, which uh, for our particular sensors, it's between negative 50 to 300 millimeters of mercury. And that's the linear pressure range. Um, so what that means is that you can easily interface with like one of our control units, the TC510 or the PCU2000 for um, a linear pressure range. Now, if you are involved in studies that would require a pressure range over 300 millimeter of mercury or under a negative 
50, um, our overpressure is negative 60 millimeters of mercury to 4,000 millimeters of mercury. Your setup would be different. You would require a low voltage amplifier. Um, and then obviously like your data acquisition unit to be able to obtain pressures using the microcath for an overpressure range. You would also need to use a multi-point calibration. Um, so the calibration itself would be a little bit um, more involved than just your straightforward two-point calibration that you do with the microcath in, in the linear range, but it's definitely doable. And I'm actually not seeing any questions coming through. Okay. Um, I see Viking. Uh, so I did get one question from Michael Mancuso. Thanks, Michael, for typing in your questions. Um, and it's his question is, what is the range of filtration needed on the bridge circuit? Um, so most of the filtration is done, and I guess this is, if you're doing clinical cases, um, the TC510 would interface to your clinical cath lab's clinical monitoring system. So it would run through the filtration or the software filter um, on the clinical monitor end. Um, if you were using, let's say, we're partnered with AD Instruments. So if you were using LabChart, um, you could run like a 50 hertz low pass filter to filter some of the noise out. Um, also, our PCU2000 has a built-in filter as well that helps out filter filter out noise. But most of the filtering would be done through your software. We will give it one more minute to see if anyone else decides to ask a question and before we end the webinar. Okay, so it doesn't seem like we're getting any more questions. Thank you all for joining the webinar today. Uh, I apologize for all of the technical issues. There will be a survey at the end um, of the presentation when you guys close out. Please uh, feel free to add any comments um, with regards to any content you'd like to see in the future regarding the microcast or any comments about this presentation.